Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Juliana and in today's video I'm going to talk, a sh uh, talk about a short story from by Oscar Wilde and that is called The Caterville Ghost. So, I know that this short story is more comical than anything and it's more a comedy than a horror story but you know it talks about ghosts so i thought this was a, a, a good bre uh, breeze of fresh air to this month and i um, from oscar wilde i already read the picture of dorian gray and i really enjoyed that uh, book and I already have heard about the Casterville, the Canterville, I'm sorry, the Canterville ghost story and I heard that it was uh, funny and really comical so I have curiosity about it and I knew that I had here somewhere um, the, this little book and so I thought why not bring this to the horror month it's not a so scary story or not at all but it's a ghost story so it counts so in this story we have we have an american diplomat hiram b otis that he is in england and he's um, buying the cast the canterville castle from Lord Canterville and so Lord Canterville is trying to uh, sell his castle because he says that in there lives a ghost that has tormented his family through generations and uh, so I think for 300 years uh, and the American says that he wants the castle and the ghost, so he's buying the package complete. When they arrive to the castle, the family, so they are Mr. Otis, Mrs. Mrs. Yes, Mrs. Otis, an older child that is called Washington. So in a, I don't I don't remember another word so in a commemoration of George Washington so they put the name in um, his uh, child to uh, an homage to Washington and he doesn't like it so we have Washington we have two twin brothers so two sons that I don't think we never we ever know the name of them and then we have Virginia, a girl. So they are four, four children. And they go to the, to the castle and there they are received by a maid, Miss, Mrs. Let me see. Omni, oh, Omni, Omni. I don't know how to pronounce it. So we can, you can see here, so how do you say that? I don't know. So, and we have this lady telling the family uh, that a ghost is in the house and it has tormented the maids, the people of the lords of the house and so on. And they um, notice that in the, in the library there is a really big spot of uh, red in the floor and the maid says that that is um, a spot of blood so um, is the blood of Lady Eleanor of Canterville that was assassinated by her husband Sir Simon of Canterville in, in 1575 and um, they, she says that the spot from much that they try to clean it, it never comes off and so Washington goes there with 
Pinkerton soap and he scrubs the spot and the spot comes out. And so he says that that soap never fails. And so um, we begin like the first night. So the ghost that is haunting the house is Sir Simon Canterville. So the man that supposedly killed his wife in 1575. And she says that Sir Simon survives the, his wife for nine years and then disappeared in strange circumstances and that his corpse was never found but his spirit haunts the house so the ghost that is in the house is this Sir Simon Canterville and so in the first night that the family is in the castle um, Sir Simon the ghost comes out and he is in the corridor and Sir Otis, so the father of the family, begins to hear um, a really loud noise like chains that are getting, getting dragged th uh, through the floor and he gets up and he opens the door and he sees the ghost there. And in turn of being scared, he's like, there you go, uh, a bottle of oil so you can put in your chains so they don't do noise. And so the, the ghost stays uh, perplexed, like what is going on? Why wasn't he scared? And he goes to his room and he's frustrated. And so from that point on, we have um, many situations where the ghost tries to scare the family and none of them is scared. And then we have the two twin brothers mocking the ghost. So they, in one night, they, the ghost comes out and he's in a decapitated suit, I, th I think, because he has many characters. So he has a cavalier, a decapitated man, a priest man. So he has many characters to scare the scare people and so he puts on a suit to go scare the boys because he wants to do to get revenge from them because they don't get scared and so he goes to the corridor and he sees another ghost and he's scared he's scared so he is so admired that he flees and so he passes hours in his room and trying to think what he's going to do and he's like well two ghosts is better than one ghost so I would have a companion to get revenge on the boys and so he goes out uh, after a few hours and he arrives near the ghost that he saw and he sees that the ghost is like um, a broom, like a stick, of, uh, a stick of, of a broom. And that he said that fall, fallen out. And so he understands that that was a trick from the boys. They that were trying to scare him. And so he gets so frustrated, he goes to his room and he, he, he doesn't come out for a few nights. But some things that he has to do is that he has to, um, every night, he has to reapply uh, paint on the floor of the library so the spot of, of blood is always there. So one thing that the family notices is that the spot always comes back and they don't know how to attribute that, but they become suspicious of the ghost. But in all of the family, one person that is not so provocateur or so dismissive of the ghost is Virginia. And someday they have a visit from um, a gentleman, a young gentleman that 
uh, he's enamored by Virginia and he passes a few nights there. They go ride with each other together um, and the ghost, has, has, as he is frustrated, he doesn't come out for a few nights and he even wonders if he should uh, scare the visitor because the visitor is some, somehow related to the family of the ghost and he's like, maybe I should get out there. But I don't think he does. One day, Virginia and that gentleman are arriving and she rips her dress and so she comes back home trying to fix it and she passes through a door that is opened and she gets the feeling that someone is inside and she goes to check it out and she sees the ghost and she's like a bit apprehensive uh, but the ghost is so absorbed in his thoughts so he's looking out the window and he's like with his head in his hands and he's like melancholic and so Virginia doesn't get scared and she starts to talk to him saying what is going on with him if it's if he's okay and he's like how dare you speak to me um, and he's like all pompous with her but she insists and she asks him um, why he's so melancholic and the ghost answers that he doesn't he doesn't um, can sleep he, do, he does not can can sleep he doesn't can't sleep how do you say that jesus i'm sorry <laughs> um he, he isn't able to sleep and he doesn't sleep uh, in 300 years and so virginia is a bit surprised but she i think before that she says to him why was he stolen her paints well she knew why he was stolen her paints because she paints and so the ghost was stealing uh, the bottles of paint to um, put on the spot of blood so he put he in red so he stole reds he stole greens he stole yellows and the only colors that were left were blue and white and so so she was also frustrated because she uh, wanted to paint the sunsets in the area of the area but she couldn't because she hadn't the right colors and she was she was complaining to him why he would stole, stole the um, steal the her paint and he would explain that well he needed that because he had to continue the haunting of the house but well he was saying that he wasn't able to sleep and he explained that he would very much like to be dead to be under the ground um, in peace without any noise without thoughts without anything he wanted to be in peace but he couldn't because he wasn't a believer so he wasn't redeemed and uh, he uh, asked Virginia for her help so if she would pray for him so he could redeem himself and go to heaven and be in peace because she ask, asked him why did she kill his wife and he told her that his wife was an egg, that she, di she didn't know how to cook, that she was boring and so on, but he was re regretful of what, she what he did. And so he asked Virginia to help, me, help him and he took her to, uh, with him to somewhere and she was hearing like voices in her head don't go look out be careful but she closed it, uh, her eyes and took her his hand and go out with him and they go somewhere they go somewhere they went somewhere 
Um, and so Virginia disappears and the family uh, is waiting for her for dinner, but she never arrives. So they wait for her like six uh, and a half, six and a half p.m. And well, she never did arrive. So they started to be worried and the father, Miss, Mr. Otis, goes looking out for her and uh, calls out to the police and to detectives to investigate her disappearing and the gentleman that was visiting them that was a friend of Virginia and enamored by Virginia went with him and they come back home and nothing no news for, for from her no one knew where she was because they start to suspicious to be suspicious about gypsies that were in the area so they went after them but they the girl wasn't with them and even some of them uh, volunteered to look look out for her so they come back home and they are all anxious and preoccupied and then a thunder goes uh, through the heavens and does a big loud noise and Virginia appears in the house and they were like where were you and Virginia had a, a little box in her hands and she said that the ghost wanted help that he wanted help to die and she did help him and he gave her the, the that box of jewels and they were like all admired by that and she took them with her through a, a secret passage in the house and they were to they were they were going to a room and in that room was um, a skeleton and so they found out where M Mr. Simon, so Lord Simon, right? How is it called? Yes, yeah, Sir Simon de Canterville, where his body was. So that was the body of Sir Simon. And she starts to pray for him. Uh, and one of the twins was in the window and saw that flowers were blooming in the trees and she virginia was so happy she was illuminated and so four days later a funeral was held in the castle so they brought out the um, the corpses the skeleton of sir simon and they buried him uh, in the family cemetery, I think. And so the ghost disappeared. So that wasn't, there, there weren't more ghosts in the house. So he was in peace, finally. And then we see a conversation between Mr. Otis, the father, and Lord Canterville, so the previous owner of Cast Canterville Castle. The Mr. Otis is saying that the, the jewels that the ghost uh, gave to his daughter weren't hers, so and they were American, so they they weren't so connected with uh, aristocratic uh, treasures, and that he wanted to return the jewels to Lord Canterville because the the jewels were perhaps from the family and he wanted to return them but lord canterville said that when he bought the house he bought the whole package so he bought the ghost and the ghost gave those jewels to virginia so the virginia was the right owner of the those jewels and so the the matter was settled and um a few months pass i think and we um, are in the wedding of virginia and that gentleman i don't know i don't remember his name duke of cheshire so duke of cheshire so he was an um, english gentleman 
and it was um, aristocratic from aristocratic uh, descendant. Uh, and so the father was like a bit bummed by that because he was um, a, a big fan of the Republic not so much a fan of aristoc aristo aristocracy so he was a bit bummed that his child would marry an aristocrat but you know he took her through the alley through of the church so he was proud but he want he didn't want to admit it and so the story ends with Virginia marrying Duke of Cheshire, Cher Cheshire, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Uh, and she was with the jewels that the ghost gave her and everyone was admired by those jewels. Um, and the, um, the story ends with the Duke asking Virginia if she will tell him what uh, she did with the ghost when they were gone. And she says to him that she didn't tell anyone what happened. And so he, say, he says to her, well, but will you tell, t will you tell me? And she asks him for, for him to not insist in that matter. And he says to her, well, but will you tell your children? And she, and she blushes, and the story ends there. So isn't that sweet? So it was a really fun. It was a really fun story. I really loved it. It was uh, an enchanting story. Um, so sweet, so tender, and I really loved the um, uh, unimpressed uh, family of the American family like they didn't care about the ghost they weren't scared by it and uh, in the middle of the story the the ghost is going to tell us how many times he killed uh, people with the scares that they had and and he was so frustrated because that family wasn't impressed by anything that he did and it was so fun it, it is a really fun story and I really love it. I hope you will read it. It's so fun. Uh, and yeah, it's so comical and a really light reading in between the readings that I'm doing. So it was really refreshing. And yeah, I hope you read it. And if you have, please let me know what you thought. I'm sure that you loved it too. So yeah. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Don't forget to press the ring bell button to all so you can receive all my notifications. Leave a like, it helps a lot the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or anything else. And that's it. I hope you have enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!